Other interesting cultural news, you have Bud Light sales still down at 28.2% and the competitors are still gaining market share. Now, this is thanks, thanks to one of my favorite websites and perhaps it's just a little bit of nostalgia since I was a child of the 90s. Now, if you're younger than me, you may have never heard of this magical company called Yahoo, which was actually like Google before Google existed. And fascinatingly enough, they had the offer from Microsoft to be sold for like $40 billion. Yeah, they didn't. They ended up selling to like Verizon for $4 billion. So again, timing is happy everything in life. They should have sold for $40 billion, not $4 billion. And the rest is history, as I might say. Now, they barely exist, but they're still active. And it kind of makes me smile when I see their logo. The, the good old days before I was paying income tax and all the other taxes and all the other ailments of time and government dealing. I mean, taxing. Now, nevertheless, going ahead to this article... This is written by Brooke De Palma. She says Bud Light sales still falling as Modelo cores fight to keep their gains. Let's see here. Now, in terms of some statistics, they say that revenue for Anheuser Busch did jump 2.6 percent to 14.55 billion from thanks to higher prices, but volume still sold dropped 5.6 percent. Which, I was going to say, given inflation, are they really making more money at the end of the day? No, absolutely not. They note that the largest decline came from North America, where volume dropped. 9.9% largely due to the sales or lack of sales rather from Bud Light. They know that sales to retailers and wholesalers were down at 13.7% and 10.7% respectively in the U.S. It looks like Bud Williams Consulting saying, quote, we lost a whole generation of hardcore Bud Light shoppers. It's going to take us at least 10 years to recapture what we lost in one year. Which, that may very well be possible. I mean, culturally speaking, we see this with yeah, kind of throughout history, they have a brand shoot themselves in the foot, alienate themselves, and eventually people come around. Not always, but I mean, people do have short memories, and maybe in a couple of years, the Bud Light will start to increase. You also have you know 20, new, 20 million people plus crossing the U.S. border illegally, as well as people coming here legally. There's not a lot of new prospective clients in North America. So, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Now, we also know that here. Going down more and more to the again, statistics, you get this nice graph. And for those just tuning in, they are contrasting Coors Light, Miller Light, and Yangling. Again, those are three or uh, four major brands. Then they have Bush Light, then they have Michelob Ultra, which is all about Anheuser Busch and Bell, the most popular intellectual properties. Well, it's their beer that they own. Then you have Bud Light. And it starts from Q1 2023. They're actually all about the same because they're, you know, that was when they started measuring the data and the deviation for the data. And Bud Light started to go down by 23.5%, 26.7%, 28.8%. Now it's at 28.2% year to date in 2024. Now Bush Light, and let's say Michael Moultra is down here, 3.1% year to date. Yangling is up 6.4%. Yeah, Miller Light up at 7.4%. And Coors Light at 16.3%, all increased year to date. If you see here, the most drastic increase and decrease, actually increase for the three winners comes from, that was a Q, Q 2023, which is, you know, when the Dylan Mulvaney incident happened, where, again, brilliant VP of marketing. She bragged on LinkedIn how she was the first female marketing leader at the company at Anheuser Bush, Alyssa Heiderschild. He said, you know, it's a good idea. We're going to give Dylan Mulvaney $185,000 to be a brand ambassador, celebrate 365 days of womanhood giving Dylan a can with Dylan's face plastered upon it. Which, interestingly enough, I feel like Harrison Ford, it belongs in a museum, because it surely does. That $185,000 resulted in $1.4 billion in lost sales for Bud Light. The greatest negative ROI in business history that I can could, I could possibly comprehend. If you know anything different, please let me know in the comments. Now, looks like Yangling at their peak increased by 20 through 6.8%. This is just astronomical. Coors Light went up was it 20.9%? Miller was 18.7%. Again, this is for Q2 2023. And that's when Bud Light was down 28, or sorry, 23.5%. And then it got worse to 26, then 28. So it continues to get worse. And again, still, even though these are kind of quote unquote leveling out, there's still, in terms of the percentage of changes, that trend is going down. But overall, they're still winning. And I don't see that trend getting reversed anytime soon. Here, 20%. Now, then we also have the fun comments, which is half the fun in life. See what kind of form. Well, the formatting is terrible on the screen. I'm just going to read them 
from my laptop here. Formatting is not good on the computer, but go ahead and go there. And I'll just go back to the chart. So if you're seeing the show, you can just kind of take a closer look at that. One of the first comments comes from TNT. And he says, quote, we've lost a whole generation of hardcore Bud Light shoppers, Bud Blinks Consulting, it's going to take us 10 years. And then he says, so now they are finally realizing the reaction to the debacle from last year it was ineffective. This was such an abysmal failure in leadership that I'm stunned as how the CEO and the board solved their jobs. Newsflash, and Andrew Bush, you're still not going to solve the problem by trying to sweep it under the rug and trying to pull a patriotic ha 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 heartstrings with a slew of old style ads. This requires more of a direct approach. We're going to start rebuilding our kind of brand. I got 253 likes and only 17 down likes. Which, yeah, they gave an abysmal we're going to stay in our political lane type of messaging a couple, uh, a couple days ago. It was so futile, I didn't even bother covering it. Maybe I'll throw it in the show next later this week. But yeah, it's amazing. Brandon Whitworth, a former CIA operative, now CEO of Andrew Bush, still has his job. Now the board of directors still have their job. I mean, th this is worse than New Coke. New Coke, ironically, you know, a lot of people have a, conspiracy, a business conspiracy theory that it was made to fail so that people would be so hungry for the old classic Coke that when they reintroduced classic Coke, I mean, that would propel the company to new heights, which it did propel the company to new heights and they were able to overtake Pepsi. But that's such a, I mean, they're betting the farm on that methodology. I don't think a business would be so, so interested or they would be, usually businesses are very risk averse, mostly. Oh, I never really thought that Coca-Cola did that intentionally thinking they were going to long-term win. I think it was a very happy coincidence that once they revert back to their old style that people came back even more. Another top comment from this Yahoo Finance article comes from Rob saying, quote, they actually made two mistakes. One, alienating all their regular customers. And two, not admitting they made a mistake and not apologizing to all the customers. How many millions have you lost Anderson and Bush? Hope it was worth it. They got 219 likes and only 14 down likes. And no, Rob, they didn't lose millions. They have lost billions. Again, $1.4 billion in sales just gone from the same time period prior to the, to the Dill Mulvaney controversy. Yeah, when you're picking your brand ambassadors, probably be a probably should be a little bit smarter than that. Let's see here. Well, so their comments just all in consensus. Not a lot of contrarian statements in this one thus far. Uh, a lot of people giving shout outs or praising Yangling because it's still family owned, the oldest brewery in the United States. Which I gotta give it to Bud Light. If it wasn't for their business blunder of the century with Bill Mulvaney debacle. I'm not really a beer enthusiast. If it wasn't for Bud Light's ineptitudes, I would never have heard about Yangling. And now that I know that it's still family owned, it's the oldest brewery in the United States. I mean, that's one of the main reasons I purchased it. And I should, or I push, um, I push it. I, one of those things where I'm not even inebriated. I simply just can't talk sometimes. But if you click that subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. I have that theory where when I first started the show, I actually spoke in a monotone. I was you know, speaking a lot faster, believe it or not, stumbling over my words. And I had a lot of stuttering. Now, as I've gained subscribers, slowly but surely, I've gained a little bit more of a speaking ability, some might argue. You know, some might also argue it's just a barely, just a modicum of improvement, barely anything at all. But I think the theory, the theory may very well hold some water. So if you click that like button and subscribe button, I think it may very well assist in my endeavor of someday gaining some speaking proficiencies. But interestingly enough, yes, I have taken speaking classes in the past. You know, it, 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 believe it or not, I was worse. Now, nevertheless, going back to Yangling, if it wasn't for Bud Lights and Neptunes, I would never heard about them. And now for my corporate events, my IT company, I will only buy Yangling beer. So when we're hosting a, a happy hour or if we're hosting one of our, you know, events where we're at a, you know, fun little golf event or what else we do lately. Uh, for the podcast, for my interview podcast, I always make sure I got a couple of cold Yanglings for someone if they prefer an alcoholic beverage. So it'll be interesting to see again, Bud Light just continues to lose market share. Their competitors are still reaping the gains to say the least. Let me know. Do you, what was the last time you actually bought Bud Light? I've seen, I think I've seen two people in the past year at a social setting where they chose a Bud Light willingly. They weren't inebriated too much. They actually said, oh yeah, I want that. And yes, I mean, granted the sample size, I live in the great country, some might say the state of Texas, or some call it Texas, got to pronounce it right. And people did give that Bud Light order person a little bit of a weird, like, the hell's wrong with, what's wrong with you? Kind of, that kind of gesture. But let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say.
Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I'd really appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.